So, Dr Porter, um, hope that you might call it off? We're going to have to see how that goes. Um, remember that we did call industrial action for December and we deferred it after we called for talk, conciliatory talks via ACAS, talks that I should say the government first refused to engage in until... Nonetheless, we are where we are. Let's deal with where we are now. Uh, is it possible that you will call them off? It remains possible, but I have to say that in order for them to be called off, the government would have to recognise the deeply held concerns of junior doctors and be able to go rather further than it's been able to push itself over Christmas. Well, what it says is that there were 16 areas of disagreement. They have found a solution on 15 of them. Hardly seems worth calling a strike for that. I don't think many junior doctors would recognise that as uh, a, a true representation of the state of talks at the moment. They've listed 15 out of 16, but you know what? If you look at it another way, the key areas that junior doctors are really concerned in, some of them have been addressed, some haven't. And to, to, uh, the, the, the government, of course, are understandably putting round the fact that agreement is almost there. It's almost there in their mind, but not in the minds of junior doctors. Well, why is that? Because it's all about um, the government wanting doctors to work seven days a week in the way that everybody else does if they work in emergency services and that's entirely reasonable isn't it you wouldn't you wouldn't dispute that for a second well the reason i wouldn't dispute that is because i along with uh, other consultants i'm a consultant myself but also crucially along with all the junior doctors in this country already work a seven day service including nights and weekends i really don't think that many listeners will understand what the government's going on about in trying to imply that there is not a seven day service for emergencies already the government hasn't come to to us with any proposals about how to change or improve or uh, move around that service or indeed to do what we think is really necessary which is to invest more resources in it the what they've is done though, is come and want... said, yeah, go on. what they've done is come and said that uh, they simply want to reduce the pay of junior doctors who do take part in seven day services yes but they are paying doctors an 11 percent increase to compensate for that that's a lot of money uh, well an 11 percent pay increase doesn't compensate when you take away a 31 percent average payment for working the on social hours. Anybody can do the maths on that. Do you, uh, do, do you not recognise the figures that he put out? What ele let's, uh, it's slightly complicated, but not very. At the moment, from 7 o'clock in the afternoon to 7 o'clock the following morning, Monday to Friday, the whole of Saturday and Sundays, that attracts a premium rate of pay. Under their offer, the new offer that is, a higher rate would run from 10 o'clock to 7 a.m. Monday to Friday from 7 p.m. on Saturday. Now, that is a bit of a concession. It's all a bit complicated. But it doesn't sound to most people as though you're being asked to do very much more than you're doing at the moment. It's all a bit complicated, really, as you say, simply because the government want to characterise this as being about pay rates. They haven't come to us suggesting that there are any better services at weekends or, indeed, how junior doctors could uh, undertake any additional or different services at weekends. They've simply come to us and said, well, we want to talk about seven day services but the only way we can think of to talk about this is to cut your pay well, I'm sorry junior doctors don't have confidence in those well, proposals well except that he says 99% uh, again let's let's quote you what he says specifically under the new deal 1% of doctors would lose pay and those that 1% would be limited to doctors working too many hours already again the pay uh, the Pay preservation proposals the government has put forward don't command the confidence of junior doctors. They're time-limited, cash-based, and crucially, don't apply for those doctors who are overworking, when the key concern of junior doctors is indeed for those who overwork. Yeah, but they shouldn't be overworking, should they? In all I agree with interest. you. But, yeah, but the way to get around it is to do what he says, and that is, as it were, to institutionalise these extra hours, to build it into the system. That's what he wants to do. I'm not quite sure I follow you in terms of uh, the way to stop overworking is to institutionalise that overwork. Well, well, no, no, no. What, what, what he is saying, and it, it, I'd have thought it was fairly straightforward, and nobody disputes, you don't dispute, that doctors obviously have to work weekends, they have to work pretty hideous hours. The question is how much money you get paid, how much extra money you get paid to do that. What he's saying is it should be a bit less than you're getting now and that that will be compensated for in other ways. It's reasonable, isn't it? So let's focus on what you just said there. We want you to carry on working at weekends, but we have to pay you less. Junior a doctors bit listen less to... for those extra hours, but it will be compensated for because there will be this 11% increase. And yet the junior doctors who do the greatest amount of out-of-hours work won't see that. So where does this 1% figure come in then? 
um, it comes into government propaganda. It doesn't come into so figures. So he's making it up. He's just simply it doesn't lying. Come in, it doesn't come into figures that junior doctors either recognize or have confidence in. And one of the key problems we've had all along this way is uh, that the government has tried to characterize this as something which it isn't. They've tried to characterize it as something about seven-day working, when in fact it's doctors who do do seven-day working at present. The one thing that everybody will recognize is that they will be enormously inconvenienced at least those people who expect uh, operations to be happening over the next days and weeks as happened last time even though you called off the strike in the end those operations will be delayed the backlog will be increased it's going to cause immense disruption isn't it let me say straight out that it is going to cause disruption and nobody regrets that disruption more than doctors well we keep didn't talking in that case we didn't oh, and we intend to we didn't set out to cause this disruption but junior doctors feel that the government has given them no choice in the matter other than to take action in this way well you're not continuing to talk are you because there is a sort of deadline if you don't call the strike within the next few hours you can't call it why can't you simply put it off have another ballot the reason that the, the reason we're here today and talking about this is because we deferred the end action for four weeks in December to see whether the government could recognize the concerns of junior doctors they've not been able to do so and that's why we've given notice again today well we'll be talking to the health secretary jeremy hunt himself in about an hour mark porter thank you very much thank you on tuesday doctors in england will almost certainly start a series of strikes they're called junior doctors but that means everyone who isn't actually a consultant so it's most of them and they're not happy because they say the new system of seven day work in the health secretary jeremy hunt wants to bring in will cut their pay amongst other things the health secretary is with me now good morning to you good morning john it's a mess isn't it well, it's very disappointing and, and somewhat perplexing because we entered a series of negotiations under ACAS just before Christmas and we actually thought we were making very good progress. Um, there were 16 areas that the BMA wanted to talk about and uh, on Christmas Eve they sent a message out to the members saying that there were two outstanding ones. Yesterday we met and we thought we had a solution to one of them and we were prepared to negotiate on the final one. Um, but the talks lasted less than an hour and, uh, and they walked out and, and started the strikes going. So it is Dr. Very Porter, sad. who runs the BMA, denies that. You may have heard him on an hour ago. He says that's not right. There's more than one area outstanding. It's much more complicated than that. Well, we'd like to know from him what it is. But, I, you know, I've got a letter here from the, our chief negotiator, Danny Mortimer, who was in the talks, who actually says that uh, good progress and a substantive offer was made on 15 of the 16 issues raised. So the thing is, though, that if you've got something where you don't think uh, you're making enough progress, what you should do is sit down and talk about it. And we, as I say, I think we all felt, to the credit of the BMA, that the talks were constructed. The pay thing that you mentioned... Is, a, is an important one because... It's I the th important. It is probably the most important, and I think we did make some progress there. Um, as you know, because we've talked about it before, um, we want to bring down weekend pay rates and make up for it with an increase in basic pay of around 11%, and we've offered protection uh, for 99% of doctors, so 99% will either see their pay protected or go up. No, Dr Porter simply doesn't accept that, doesn't recognise that. Well, we, he asked us to show him our workings, as to how we would do that, which we did, uh, and they didn't raise any objection to that. And after, you know, pretty... Raising them now. <laughs> yeah, but why, after he's called a strike and walked out of the talks, you know, we, he's had uh, four weeks when we've been sitting around the table together when he's seen our workings, and we actually think that, broadly, they do accept... Uh, that uh, we are protecting pay, which we want to. Doctors have mortgages yeah. to pay, families to bring up, and, and they work very hard, and we don't want... I mean, no government or health secretary could possibly want to cut doctors' pay. Well, they do a fantastic job, yeah, and indeed, we want to support indeed, them. Indeed, and, and, and we hear you say that, but it isn't just Dr. Porter. I mean, we've, as you can imagine, since that interview an hour ago, with endless emails coming in from doctors saying, you are cutting our take-home pay because of what you're doing to our weekend uh, pay. Well, we've offered an absolute pay protection um, and we've shown the workings and, you know, we're happy to go through it in enormous detail with the BMA. But uh, could I just make a broader point here? Because uh, pay is one of the issues. Another is safety. And again, it's in no one's interest for doctors to be too tired when they're looking at patients. We have 200 avoidable deaths every week in the NHS and doctors are as committed as I am to bringing that down in the wake of mid-staff. So we have got new protections. For example, in this new contract, we're saying doctors can't work more than four nights in a row, which I think is very important in terms of sleep patterns. But I would say that more broadly, there is actually now at the start of this year, 
a big opportunity for the NHS. Except that many posts are underfilled. I and mean, that is part of the problem, mm, isn't it? And, and so long as you've got posts that are underfilled, you can't impose new restrictions. I mean, you just can't do it. Yes, well, we've, we've employed uh, 10,000 more doctors in the last five years. And what I was going to go on to say is that uh, the Chancellor's putting an extra £3.8 billion in real terms into the NHS next year, one of the biggest increases of, of any year. And that will allow us to employ more doctors. But if we want to employ more doctors... We also have to remember patients. And what we said in our manifesto, we want a, a seven-day right. NHS because we want to promise every patient the same high-quality care right. every day. And I think, I think everybody understands what you want to do. Um, there's no point in rehearsing the arguments between you and the BMA. We're not going to get anywhere in the next minute. What happens next Tuesday? Let's assume it all breaks down as it looks at the moment. If it's going to, they all walk out. What, what can you do to sign? People aren't going to be at risk, are they? Because there'll still be emergency care. What can you do to, to reduce the inevitable delays and possibly chaos that will result? Well, we will now go through an exhaustive process and uh, do everything we can to make sure patients are kept safe. But actually, the biggest single thing that we could do is to get back to discussions, which is why we've invited the BMA to come back and talk under the auspices. We've only got a few hours, the deadline. Um, we, we, haven't, you know, we haven't got long, but the door is open. And, and let's be clear, there isn't a big difference All between right. what doctors want and what we want, and we should sit down and work out a solution. Jeremy Hunt, many thanks. Thank you.